I don't have a good intro for today's video. It's about a Nazi who became a beloved football star in England after the war. Normally I try to employ the use of metaphor or analogy to introduce a topic, but honestly this story is so unusual that you're just not going to have any paralleling emotional or personal experiences that I can provoke. You don't have anything in your library of memories that resembles a World War II Nazi joining an English football club straight out of a prisoner of war camp, unless you already know the person I'm talking about. The best I can do to entice you is to say it's an interesting story. Bernhard Troutman was born in Bremen, Germany in 1923. Coming from a working class area, Troutman grew up poorly educated but intensely physically active with a love of sport playing with the local football clubs. Another less pleasant organisation he joined at the age of 10 was the Hitler Youth, specifically the junior section, the Jungvolk. It was a bit like the Boy Scouts, except the focus on eugenics was significantly emphasised. He carried both his love of sport and his love of swastikas with him throughout his youth, and by the age of 17 he was a recognised athlete of unsurpassed ability and a devoted Hitler-loving Nazi. Now it's important to note that not everyone in Germany during that time was a Nazi. Not even all the German soldiers were Nazis. They were largely ordinary, decent people. Their country was at war, so they fought for their country. Many did not support or agree with Adolf Hitler. Bernhard Troutman was not one of these people. Bernhard Troutman was a committed Nazi, and... It's not hard to see why. He was a tall, muscular, athletic blonde guy with blue eyes. He was like the perfect model of the Aryan master race that Hitler preached about. Of course it was going to be easy for him to buy into this belief system. He was the fucking protagonist of it. He was indoctrinated from a very young age to believe that he was one of the chosen ones. As soon as he turned 17, Troutman enlisted to fight for Germany during the Second World War and became a paratrooper. He was assigned to Operation Barbarossa, Germany's invasion of Russia. Troutman made for a good soldier. He was physically fit, mentally aggressive, and could kill without remorse. After all, the Nazi ideology had taught him to view Germany's enemies as subhuman. This did not go unrecognised, and he was awarded the Iron Cross for bravery in battle. However, as we all know, the good times for Germany wouldn't last in Russia. As winter set in and the Soviets dug in, casualties soared and morale plummeted. The Germans terrorised the Russian countryside and committed awful atrocities. Troutman witnessed and even partook in these acts, but the reality was starting to sink in for him. He stated, You didn't think of the enemy as people at first. Then, when you began taking prisoners, you heard them cry for their mother and father. When you met the enemy, he became a real person. The longer the war went on, you started having doubts. But Hitler's was a dictatorial regime, and you couldn't say what you wanted. In the German army, you got your orders and you followed them. If you didn't, you were shot. Troutman's unit was withdrawn from the Eastern Front, with only a third of the men surviving. Troutman was then rotated to the Western Front to defend against the Allied D-Day invasions. It was here he realised the war was lost. After an Allied bombing left him buried in rubble for three days and killed most of his comrades, Troutman decided to head home. Knowing the punishment for desertion was death, he stayed away from German troops, but was caught by two American soldiers in France. Troutman escaped the soldiers, leaping a wall that landed him at the feet of a British soldier, who greeted him by saying, Hello Fritz, fancy a cup of tea? Classic. In the POW camp in Britain, German soldiers were classified by their devotion to Nazi ideology. Now 22, Bernard Troutman was one of the few who was categorised as an unrepentant Nazi. During his time here, he was subjected to re-education, made work with Jewish officers, and shown film of the scenes inside the recently captured concentration camps. Soon after, Troutman was reclassified as a non-Nazi. He took up football in the camps playing centre-half. He was injured during a game but refused to go off, so they stuck him in the goals. And that just sort of became his position. In accordance with the Geneva Convention, when the war was over, Troutman was offered repatriation to Germany. But by now, his old life was over. He was no longer a Nazi. The belief system he had spent his life with wasn't one he was comfortable with anymore. He didn't even keep any of his things from the war, not even his Iron Cross. It was time for a fresh start and a new Bernhard Troutman. He settled down in England. Bernhard began playing for the local football clubs. 
Wouldn't be my first choice, but it's probably better than war. His skill as a goalie got him recognised by Manchester City, who offered to sign him. Manchester City? Ah, fuck. I think I would choose war. This caused considerable controversy, and 20,000 fans protested outside the stadium. His early tenure with the club was a constant barrage of jeers, death threats, and boycotts. And it's kind of understandable, this was 1949, only four years after the end of the war. Almost every one of these people had lost loved ones to the Germans. They didn't want to support a team that employed one of them. Even the team's captain at that time, Eric Westwood, was a war hero who partook in the D-Day landings. When he met Troutman, he said, There's no war in this dressing room. We welcome you as any other member of the staff. Just make yourself at home, and good luck. Troutman was also helped by the fact that a communal rabbi of Manchester, Alexander Altman, whose parents had been killed by the Nazis, urged fans to give the man a chance and judge him by his own merits. He should not be held accountable for the crimes of his country. I have to say, this is an awful lot of acceptance for a man who used to be a devoted Nazi. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's heartwarming, it's just, I'm wondering where all this energy is in my life. Why don't people give me a chance? I'm not even a Nazi, I'm just fucking ugly. Troutman's reputation with the fans started to shift, and he proved himself a competent goalie. As he demonstrated his skill on the pitch, he turned from vilified to beloved, and fans endearingly referred to him as Bert, as Bernhard was a little unusual for them. The English really aren't hard to win over. If you can kick a ball around, it doesn't matter who you are or what you've done, they'll adore you. Perhaps his most famous feat of footballing was in the 1956 FA Cup final. Diving at a Birmingham City player's feet to make a save, Bert sustained an awful neck injury. He refused to go off, seems to be kind of a theme in his decision making, and made two crucial saves as Manchester City won 3-1. It was later discovered that his neck was broken and he had finished the game with vertebrate fragments threatening to dislodge and paralyse or kill him. Burt was even appointed an honorary OBE, that is, an officer of the most excellent order of the British Empire, for his work in Anglo-German relations. And that just goes to show how well liked he had become. Remember, he was a former Nazi, being appointed an OBE was a big deal. Bernhard Troutman spent his later years as a coach for international teams, but he always considered England his true home, saying, my education only began the day I arrived in England. The British made me what I am. When I visit Germany, they say to me, Be honest, you're English through and through, and I'm mighty proud to consider myself. I come back four or five times a year, and I always think, Great, I'm home. Bernhard Troutman died of a heart attack in 2013, leaving behind a legendary career as one of the greatest goalkeepers of his era. Although perhaps more interesting than his career was his journey there and his transition as a human being. Some will never forgive him. Some already have in the space of time it took to tell his story. Was he deserving of his redemption? I suppose that's up to you. Me, I'd just make the videos and ask you to like and subscribe and buy the t-shirts and follow me on Twitter.